Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a collared vest. This weekend project had a dual texture design featuring the Suzette stitch, clean ribbing, and a collar for some added sophistication. So much to love. Speaking of, if you're looking for a crochet make to love, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns you're sure to love with New Patterns Weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 150 grams of yarn, and that's 300 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what pets you had as a kid. At one point in my life, there were two guinea pigs, two hamsters, and one dog in the house. <laughs> Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and we're going to start off by making a chain the length that we want the bottom of this top to be. So placing our tail end right at our under bust, we're going to make a chain that is either cropped or full length, however long you want this to be. I would like for mine to be full length, so I'm going to be making a chain that is 12 inches or 31 centimeters, or a chain of 50 for me. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that is our turning chain, and into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, and when we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and gently pull through both loops on our hook. So we're going to pull through one, and then also pull through the second. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, insert, yarn over, and gently pull through both of those loops. And that's it. We're going to continue with one slip stitch into every chain, and as a quick tip, make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row will be too tight to work into, and also it could shrink the initial chain length that we made. So we've made our way down with our first row, which was all slip stitches. Now from here we're going to get started on our falling row, which is going to be another slip stitch row, but now within the back loops. So chain one, and flip your work. And all we're going to do is start by finding that last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from you, Yarn over and again gently pull through everything. Let's do this once more. Into that following stitch's back loop. Yarn over and gently pull through everything on your hook. And that's it for this first portion of the bottom of our piece. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. We're going to continue to repeat this row with no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can stretch because this portion does have some stretch to it from mid underarm over to about mid collarbone. And I'll meet you back right after we finish up an odd number row. We are back and I have just finished up the first half of the bottom of my piece. I have a total of 17 rows and my width is two and a half inches or six centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows. Now with increases along the top until we reach mid chest. So right after that last row, we're all going to chain two. Now that we have our chain two, we are gonna flip our work, and we're going to start this increased row by slip stitching into that second chain from our hook. So we're gonna skip that first one, and then into the next, insert with a back loop slip stitch. So pull through everything that is per usual, and from here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And as a really quick tip, this row that we're working on will have one extra stitch from our previous row because we worked into that extra chain. 
So we are back. We have just finished up our first increase row, and then we made our way all the way back up with our back loop slip stitch row. And all we're going to do from here is start every even number row with a chain two. So we just made our way all the way up with our odd number row. So now we're just going to chain two. Just like our previous increase row, that first chain is going to count as a stitch. That second chain is going to count as a chain. We're going to flip our work and start our following row off with a back loop slip stitch into the second chain from our hook. So into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And that's it. We are going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, we're going to chain one because the bottom does need to stay blunt, flip our work and then repeat. And we're going to continue this until this bottom portion that we have can stretch from mid underarm over to mid chest. And then I'll meet you back right after an odd number row. So we are back. We have just finished up the increase portion of our bottom. And now we're going to do the middle row and then mirror everything we did here on the other side. So just to let y'all know, I have a total of 27 rows, and this width is just about 4 inches or 10 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, our middle row is just going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So since we're along the top, we're just going to chain 1, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So chain 1 and flip, and make your way down with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. But before we move on to the next portion, we do want to make sure that we are inserting a stitch marker into the top of this middle row, just so we know where that's at. Then make your way down with your back loop slip stitches. At the end of this row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches, and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the decrease side of the bottom portion. We have just finished up our middle row, and we have also made our way up with our following back loop slip stitch row, leaving the last two stitches, and now we're going to do a decrease at the end of every other row. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then also into that last stitches back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That is how we do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Our falling row is not going to have a decrease, so just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of that row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two so we can decrease together just once more. We are back. We have just finished up our back loop slip stitch row that ended on a decrease, our falling back loop slip stitch row, making our way all the way down, and made our way all the way back up with another back loop slip stitch row, leaving the last two stitches just so we can decrease together once more. So this decrease is going to be exactly the same way as our previous decrease row. So insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three, and that's it. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as this increase portion right over here. Once we do, I will meet you back just to talk you guys through how we're going to finish up the bottom of our front panel. I am back with the decrease half of my bottom band. I have a total of 38 rows now. My width is now five and a half inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the bottom, all we're gonna do is put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we have the same amount of rows as this first half of our bottom band. Once we do, I will meet you back along the top. All right, I am back and the entirety of my front panels band is all finished. I have a total of 55 rows and it's just about 8 inches or 20 centimeters unstretched. And now from here we're going to single crochet along the top of our piece so we can get started on the cut portion after that. So we all should have ended along the top. What we're going to do is chain one and put one single crochet into every side row. And we're all going to start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. This is my following row, which is this raised row, so I'm going to find that top loop and insert with another single crochet. Let's do this set again. This is my following side row, which is this divot right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert with a single, and then into my following side row, which is this raised row, I'm going to find that top loop, and insert with one single crochet. We're going to continue with one single crochet into every side row until we reach our stitch marker at the middle. So we made our way all the way down to our middle row, which is where our stitch marker is. And into that top loop, we're going to be doing an increase of three single crochets. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out for now, 
and then into that top loop of this row, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with three single crochets. So there's one, into that same top loop with two, and then into that same top loop with three single crochets. Make sure you insert your stitch marker into that middle stitch that we made so we know where the middle is, and then continue with one single crochet into every side row. All right, so we are back and we all should have finished up our single crochet row. As you guys can see, I got a little bit more done, but I just wanted to do that to make sure that I got my numbers right for you guys. But do not fear, both of our cups are going to be done exactly the same way. So what we're going to do from here is chain one, flip our work, and then do our first Suzette stitch row until we reach our middle stitch marker stitch. So how we do our Suzette stitches is that it's going to be a single crochet and a double crochet into that same stitch. So into that first available stitch that we have, we're going to insert with one single crochet and then into that same first stitch, another double crochet. So we should have two stitches into that same first stitch. And for tutorial and pattern sake, this is our first set. Let's do this again. After every Suzette stitch set, we are going to be skipping that following stitch because that double crochet actually counts as that stitch. If we work into there, we will accidentally be increasing. So we're always going to skip one stitch and into the following, insert with a single and then also with a double crochet. So now we should all have one, two Suzette stitch sets. Let's do this again a little bit faster. Skip that following stitch into the one right after that, a single and also a double. And we're going to continue to do our Suzette stitch sets until we have one stitch left right before our stitch marker stitch. So we have just made our way all the way down with our first Suzette stitch row. Now we all should have one available stitch left and then our stitch marker stitch. And we are going to be closing off our Suzette stitch row with a half double crochet into that stitch marker stitch. So yarn over, skip that next stitch and then into the following, which should be our middle stitch. Insert with a half double crochet. So yarn over, pull through all three. Now our row one is complete. Getting started on our row two, we're all going to chain one and flip our work again. So for this portion of our cup, every even number row is going to end with a decrease of three half double crochets. So getting that started, we're gonna start our Suzette stitch sets per usual. So just into that last stitch from our previous row, should be the top of that half double crochet. Insert with a single and a double, and per usual, skip a stitch into the following, a single and a double again. And we're going to continue doing this until we all have a total of four stitches left. And just as a really quick tip, when it comes to doing our Suzette stitch sets, each of our set will be worked into our previous rows single crochet to get the texture that we want. So just to show you, we are going to be skipping that following stitch and you can tell that it's a double crochet from our previous row because it's a little bit taller. And then into that next insert with a single and a double. I'll meet you back when we have four stitches left. Our row two is nearly complete. We should all have one, two, three, four stitches left, and we're going to close off every even number row with a decrease of three half doubles. So yarn over. We are going to skip that following stitch and then insert your hook into the stitch right after that or the third to last stitch. Pull through into that second to last stitch, pull through, and then into that last, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then just yarn over and pull through all five. That is our decrease. Now we're going to be repeating these two rows. So let's just get it started. Chain one and flip your work. We're gonna insert our hook into that first stitch with a single and continue on with our Suzette stitch sets until we have two stitches left. Our row three is nearly complete. We should all have one, two stitches left and to close off any odd number row, we're just gonna half double crochet into that last stitch. And to get started on row four, just chain one, flip our work and do our Suzette stitches all the way down, leaving the last four so we can decrease together once more. We are back and we are nearly finished with our first one, two, three, four rows. We should all have four stitches left. And now we're going to yarn over preparing for our decrease. We're gonna skip that following stitch and into the third to last, pull through, into that second to last, pull through, and then into that last, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, and that's it. From here, we are going to be repeating our two previous rows 
until this portion that we are making right here can reach about one inch underneath our underarm. So we just want to make sure that we are placing this first single crochet row that we did before we got started on our cups right at our underbust because that's where that will sit. And I will meet you back right after in odd number row. But one more really quick tip that I have, if your work is starting to curve in like this just a little bit, as you guys can see, I have it on both sides, that's completely fine and normal. That's just because the slip stitches are a little bit tighter than the expanded Suzette stitches. I'll meet you back when we have this all finished up. I am back with the height of my cup. I have a total of 11 rows. That is not counting our first single crochet row. And the height that I have for just the cup portion is four inches or 10 centimeters. Now we all should have ended along the inside. And what we're going to do now is insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch right where the corner of our underarm is. So since the edge of our front panel should be at about mid underarm, we're going to stretch it to mid underarm, and then we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into the stitch that's nearest to the corner of our underarm, making sure that it is an even number. And now from here, we're basically going to be repeating these two rows until we make our way all the way down till we just have one Suzette stitch set, and then that's going to be our strap. So I have inserted my stitch marker into the fourth stitch from the outer edge. From where we're at, we're going to chain one, flip our work and then do our Suzette stitch sets until we have four stitches left right before our stitch marker. We have made our way down and we should all have one, two, three, four stitches right before our stitch marker. So now we're going to be doing a decrease of three half double crochets. So yarn over, skip that following stitch into that third to last stitch, insert, pull through into the stitch after that, pull through and then into that last stitch before our stitch marker, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and that's it. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we make our way all the way down to where we just have one Suzette stitch set and a half double crochet. And that should be an odd number row. So I'll meet you back when we have that finished up, just to talk you through how to end the cup with our strap. Alrighty, so I am back and I have just made my way all the way up until we have just one Suzette stitch set and a half double crochet. I have a total of 23 rows, and the length that I have counting from this first row right where the point is all the way up is just about eight inches or 20 centimeters. Now from here, we're just going to repeat this previous Suzette stitch row until we get the length of the strap that we want. So I'm just going to do the following row with you and then I'll let you guys do the rest on your own. So let's all chain one and flip our work. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into that first stitch with a single and double and we should all have just two stitches left. So just half double crochet into that last stitch and that's basically it. All we're going to do is repeat that row until we get a strap that can reach up and behind our neck because this is going to be a halter and just double check and making sure that our single crochet row that we did when we got started on our cups is at our under bust. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 31 rows. That's roughly 11 inches or 27 centimeters. And once when you have one of your cups all finished up, all you're gonna do is insert your hook into the top corner stitch of the other side and then repeat everything for the same amount of rows. I'll meet you back when we have both of our cups all finished up. And now that we have both of the cups finished, we can get started on the back panel. Now we're gonna get started with the bottom of the back panel, pretty much like how we got started with the bottom of the front panel and that's going to be extremely simple. We're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the front panel. So for me, 50. And then we're just gonna do back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the front panel. And when we have that, I will meet you guys back so we can get started on the height of the detail portion for our back panel. So now that the bottom portion of our back panel is finished, we are now going to do a single crochet row along the top and that's going to be done pretty much the same way as the front panel, but without the increases because we don't have that point in the back. So we're all going to chain one and just put one single crochet into every side row. So I'll find that first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert into that top loop with one single crochet. Into my following side row, insert my hook into there with another single crochet and that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. All right, so our single crochet row is finished and now all we're going to do is Suzette stitch rows until we have the same amount of rows as this first underarm portion that we did for the cup. So for those of you that have my numbers, I did a total of 11 rows. So let's just get started on this first one together. So from where we're at, let's all chain one and flip our work. Let's all start by inserting our hook into the top of that first stitch with a single and a double. 
skip a stitch, and then single and double, and continue on with our Suzette stitch sets until we all have two stitches left. So we've made our way down with our first Suzette stitch row. We should all have two stitches left, and we're just going to half double crochet into that last stitch. Now we're just going to be repeating this Suzette stitch row until we have the amount of rows that we need. So no increases and no decreases, and I need a total of 11 rows. So when I have 11, making sure that we are not counting that first single crochet row, we are going to do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and the height of the back panel is all finished. And once we have this, we are ready to seam both the front and the back panel together. So when it comes to seaming our piece together, the seam that we're gonna have for the bottom is going to be different than the seam that we have working our way up our cup. So let's get started with the bottom seam first. We're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are all going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And we're now going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So let's all start by finding our first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. And then into that next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. When we have that, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And that's it, let's do this again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything, and that's it. We're gonna continue to do our outside loop slip stitch seam, working our way all the way up the bottom portion of our piece. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back so we can seam up the cups together. So we are back and we have just finished up seaming the sides. Now we're going to seam the cup to the height of the back panel that we just did. So now we're gonna do a single crochet seam. So we're now gonna flip our work wrong side out, meaning the seam that we just did for the sides is now along the inside because that seam should be along the outside when it's worn. And we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the side row that we have when we did the single crochet along the top of our bands. So into that side single crochet row into the front panel side single crochet row into the back panel and we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. Now we're all going to start with a chain one and we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So finding our first side row, this is mine right here, I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook in through there and then I'm going to find my first side row within the back panel and insert my hook in through there as well. And if you're like me, you have a decent amount of tail ends, go ahead and just place that over your hook if you don't want to weave them in later. And all we're gonna do is single crochet once. Let's do this again. Now into my following side row, we're gonna insert with two single crochets. So this is my top loop, let's insert. And then into the back panel, find that following top loop, this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there and single crochet. And since this is the second side row, we're going to be doing two single crochets. So into that same top loop within the front panel and same top loop within the back panel. It should be a little bit easier since they should already be gathered and single crochet. And we're going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets. So let's just do the next set of side rows together. This is my following side row. Find that top loop, insert your hook, find the top loop within the back panel. This is mine right here. Insert into that top loop and single crochet. And then our following side row is gonna be two single crochets. So this is my following side row. Insert into that front panel. Insert your hook into that top loop. Find the side row within the back panel. Single crochet once, and then one more into that same top loop within both the front and the back panel. And that is it. We're gonna continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. We are back, everything is all seamed up, so now we're going to seam the straps and then we can finish up with our collar. So first things first, we're going to be placing our two straps that we have against each other, but we just wanna make sure that once one's flipped right side out, the seam is going to be along the inside. So go ahead and twist that whichever way you guys need to. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And we are now going to do a single crochet seam. So let's all start by inserting our yarn onto our hook pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we should all have three stitches left. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert with one single crochet. Again, into that following stitch, into the front panel, 
following stitch into the back panel, single, and we should all have just one stitch left. So into that last stitch, into the front, last stitch, into the back, and single. And now that we have this, we are going to do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to single crochet along our neckline. So inserting our hook into the side seam that we have that's nearest to our strap seam, we are going to insert our hook. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, making my way all the way around and back up. So just find that first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop. And if you don't want to weave in your tail ends, place all of your tail ends over your hook and then single crochet. And then into our following side row, which this is mine right here, find that top loop and insert into there with two single crochets. So there is one and then into that same top loop with a second and that's it we're going to continue doing this making our way all the way around then slip stitch into that chain space we don't have any more side rows left to work into and do a chain up of one and cut all right so we are back our single crochet row is all finished up and we did do a chain up of one and cut now we're all going to get started on our collar so what we're all going to want to do is try on our piece then we're going to be inserting our stitch markers into the stitches where we want our collar to be so you can make this as high or as low as you'd want I want mine roughly about where my collarbone is. So from my tail end, so where the seam is for the strap, I counted down 30 stitches and inserted my stitch markers into both sides. Now you can insert your stitch markers into any stitch that you guys would like. You just want to make sure that both sides have the same amount of stitches because we don't want our collar to be lopsided. And what we're all going to do now is insert our hook into one of our stitch marker stitches. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and we're all going to start by making a chain the length that we would like for this collar to be. Now keeping in mind that the front of a collar is going to be a little bit longer than the back because we are going to do some decreases because it is going to get shorter the further back that we get. So I would like for mine to start at about 3 inches or 8 centimeters so I'm going to start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain 2. That chain 2 doesn't count as a stitch that's our turning chain and we're going to half double crochet into every chain. So starting with that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, go ahead and insert with a half double crochet. And continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last two. So we have made our way all the way down. We should all have one, two chains left, and now we're going to do a decrease. So yarn over into that second to last chain, insert, pull through, and then into that last chain, insert, pull through. When we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all four, and now we're going to connect it into the base. So we're all going to start by finding that next available stitch into the base, working our way up towards the back. Insert with a slip stitch, and now our row one is complete, and that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Now getting started on the following row, we're just going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work again and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And at the end of this row, chain two, flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet while doing a decrease of two back loop half double crochets into the last two stitches and connect it into the base the same way that we just did. And that's pretty much it. We are gonna continue to repeat these two rows until this collar portion that we have becomes the total length that we want it to be because remembering that the further back that we get, the shorter it's going to be. And once we have that width, I will meet you guys back along the base just to show you how we're going to finish off our collar. All right, so I am back and I now have a total of 11 rows for my collar all finished up. Now this is the width that I'd like for the rest of my collar to be. So I'm just going to continue on with our back loop half double crochet rows, but now with no increases and no decreases until I reach the last stitch that we have on this side of our tail end. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. Repeat everything we did here on this side, and then I'll meet you back right after the second one is finished, but do not do a chain up a one and cut so that we can seam it all together. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up both sides of our collar, and for the second one, we did not do a chain up one and cut. Now we're just going to seam it all together. So what we're all going to do is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then we're going to do a single crochet seam. And we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. And that's it. 
We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So our collar is finished and all seamed up. The last thing we're going to have to do is just single crochet along the back and along the outside of our front panel. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the back panel and just single crochet into every stitch. And then once we reach some side panels, just like how we did for the front panel, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row and make your way all the way around. When we do, slip stitch into that chain space and then we are all done. We are back and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.